Hello, Heather Broadbent here, violinist, instructor at Online Violin Education, where I train violinists all over the world how to improve their technical skill sets for more melodic playing. I'm really excited about these training videos to walk you through our theme song here at Online Violin Education. So one day I just woke up and I had this idea, write a theme song for Online Violin Education. So I did. And this is what came forth. I've been doing a lot of composing lately. You probably have seen all the exercise books that I've written. And uh, I've gone more into the world of etudes and pieces. And this is one thing that has developed. So I'm really excited. I have some other compositions up my sleeve that I'm working on all at the same time. But um, they have to wait <laughs> until later for you to hear about those. But the OVE theme song, what uh, we're going to do is actually divide this up into three different sections, OK? So uh, the first, this video is going to be about measures one through roughly where it repeats, which is uh, measure 17. So we're actually just going to walk through measures one through 16 uh, because that's the, that's the easier version. That's introducing the theme, okay, here. Um, I shouldn't say the easier version, but it's a statement of the theme. And then after measure 16 goes into some double stops and more exploration of the idea within two voices. So we have the double stops going on, as you can see. In your music, which you printed up, if you haven't, you can just click the image on this page and you'll be able to get the music and download or print. It's up to you. And then the third video is going to be after the double stop. So that's going to be uh, measure 34 is the third video. And that's more into positions, uh, specifically only positions. So it's, we have those three sections we're going to work out. Uh, so first off, whenever you start a new piece, you want to look at your time signature, okay? So we have our time signature, which is 6-8. You also want to look at your key signature, which we're in the key of D. And at the filming of this video, our focus with the practice calendar is the key of D in fourth position. Uh, and last month, it was a key of D in uh, third position, or a couple months ago, I don't remember when. But we're here in the nice, comfortable key of D where we have two sharps. And our two sharps are F sharp and C sharp. And your half steps, or where your fingers touch on the instrument, is going to be between F sharp and G and C sharp and D. Okay, so keep that in mind. And always think your note names, not numbers. As you see, if you follow along with my, my books and my works, I don't have very many fingerings in there. The fingerings that are there to let you know, okay, when to play four or when to shift, that type of thing. But I specifically don't have fingerings in there because you need to be reading the note names and not numbers. One of, the big, one of my big stresses in my methodology of teaching the violin. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to move the stand a little bit closer. Okay, so first off, let's talk about this time signature. Our time signature is in 6 8. And whenever you have a 6 8, you can count in two ways. You can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's a really good way when you first start and you're working really slowly. So in that case, if we we're practicing really slow, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that's how you'd count it. Then eventually, after you get really comfortable with everything in subdivided eighth notes and a count of six in each measure, then you can count it in a big two. And in a big two, uh, it's basically dividing the measure up into two sections of three. Okay, so it would be like one, two, three, two, two, three. That's the big two and the six, eight. So here we would have. It would be one, two. Okay, in the big two. Now, I specific, specifically have this in 6 8 and not in a 3 4. If you're looking at the music, you may think, well, why, should, why is this not in a 3 4? A 3 4 gives it a completely different feeling. In 3 4, it would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And it has a different feeling. If you have it in a 6 8, it actually gives it a feeling kind of like a jivey feeling. So we have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so it has a completely different feeling in a 6 8 as opposed to a 3 4. Uh, so that's why I have it in a 6 8 because when I, when I write music, I uh, hear it and feel the time signature actually how it's supposed to be before it's written out on the page. So it's kind of an interesting process for me because I write it out 
And then I figure out what the time signature is. I don't start with thinking, okay, the time signature is going to be this and this and this and this. It's basically a feeling. It's like I hear the music and then with the feeling of that music, how it's laid out, um, then I know what the time signature is going to be, okay? And that's the case for this piece. It's in 6-8. And it's a nice little challenge for you guys. So uh, you can have a feeling of working in 6-8 because it's a little bit more difficult time signature as opposed to a 3-4, 2-4, 4-4, that type of thing, okay? And I like to challenge you guys. That's what I'm here for. Okay, so uh, the tempo, the ideal tempo for this is 72 for the dotted quarter. Now your dotted quarter is your big one or your big two beat in 6-8, okay? So if you wanted to know what your eighth note would be, you would have to take that 72 and you times it by three. You would multiply it by three. So that's pretty quick. <laughs> um, so you can do the exact math if you want to figure out exactly what your eighth note would be. Uh, so uh, I'll just walk us through two measures at a time. So here at the beginning, the finger pattern that we have is two and three touching because we have our half step between F sharp and G. So really nice and comfortable for the first two measures. <laughs> Now, whenever you work with me on video, so this uh, you get to experience this uh, experience working with me on video here for the theme song. But basically, how what you see here is everything I do in different courses. It's the same type of feeling. I walk you through, and um, so you can always pause the video. So it's really good after I talk about something, you can just pause the video and apply it. That's the beauty of video training. And if you know, like when you're working in violin lessons and you go to your lesson and if you don't record it, maybe you, you get a little nervous or a little anxious, then you leave the lesson. It's like, oh my gosh, what happened in that lesson? You don't even remember. And the beauty of video is that you can stop. There's no nervousness involved, right? You can just learn in a really comfortable setting. All right, so measure three basically repeats your measure one. And then two and four, measures two and four exactly the same, just uh, in, in two, we have the A that you can play with four, or open, I would uh, encourage you to play with four. And then measure four, we have the A an octave lower, okay? Then as we go on, measure five is the same as one and three. Okay, so it's always good when you're starting a piece to know where your similar measures are. And I even encourage um, my students to take uh, different colors. Like here I have different colored Sharpies. You can like bracket out the, the measures that are the same in a specific color. Or take a colored pencil and color them in so you can see specifically what measures are the same to help you with the learning process. Now, as we get into measure six, this is where the rhythm gets slightly complicated, and I would highly suggest here that you subdivide and count your eighth notes. So our rhythm here in measure six is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's measure six. And as you see, we have a tied over note into measure seven. So with a tie, you know you don't repeat this, the note that it is tied to, okay? So this isn't a slur, a slur marking, it's a tie, okay? so. Um, so here's measure six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're in the next measure, okay? So now I'm going to walk you through the two measures together. So this is measure six and seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's in the slow mo. <laughs> All right, I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you really want to play it subdividing in the six beats so you can feel really comfortable with it. Then you can speed it up. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so it really has a nice jive, a nice feeling uh, of challenging rhythm. Now, if you wanted to, after you've done that and you're ready to go into the big two, then the big two would occur on these beats. I'll give you the notes where the beats occur. So in measure six, the first big beat is on the F sharp eighth note, okay? And then the second big beat would be on the C natural. In measure seven, the first big beat is obviously on the E that's tied over. And then the second big beat is on the last eighth note of that dotted quarter note, D, okay? So I'll play it for you and tell you where the big beats are. So we have one, and then two is here. Two, one, two, okay? So that kind of gives you an idea. Now, I'll go ahead and actually mark it in the music and show you where exactly that occurs. And then you can see how you would mark it in your music uh, to, get, to get the big beats, okay? So we have 
I'm just gonna mark it in here just a sec so you can see. So I just marked it in green. <laughs> so um, you can see this here where the beats are in measures six and seven. These are the big beats. You can see exactly where they are, okay? Those are the big beats. Now, if you wanted to count the little beats, I'll show you where those little beats are. If you're counting in six is what I'm referring to, okay? So that would be like this. And you can see you have the big dashes for the big ones and then the little dashes for the little ones, okay? I did have somebody ask me, well, how do you mark half steps? And um, so I can take this time and show you now how you mark the half steps so you know where your fingers touch, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and do that on measure eight. So in measure eight, you can see it's like an upside down V. That is where the half step occurs between the three and the two, the G and the F sharp, okay? So let's go ahead and walk through this again from measure six. We have a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six is how you play that measure. So really work it out slow and then you'll be able to get the groove with a big two, okay? Now measure eight, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? So with this being disjointed like this, you kind of lose the sense of the phrase. So I'm gonna start from the beginning and play this much for you so you can hear it. goes into eight and it's like a cascading waterfall. Um, so here's the end of seven. Okay, so it's really fun. And as you see when I play, you can see that I feel those big beats. You know, you can, you can see that I feel it when I play. Um, and that's what you want to feel. You want to feel the beats internally. Uh, so you don't want to be sitting there tapping your foot or anything, okay? You don't want to tap your foot, maybe tap a toe or something, but you really do want to feel it internally when you're dealing with the beats. Okay, so measure nine, it repeats just like measure one. Okay, and measure 10 is really cool, count it slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, isn't that gorgeous? So, so measure nine. So you can really feel the big beats. Uh, in measure 10. So you have a big beat on the F sharp and you have a big beat on the E, the dotted quarter note E there, okay? And going on, measure 11 is just like 9. And then measure 12 has the same rhythm that we had in measure 10. Uh, okay, so uh, just going up the scale, measure 12. And definitely use a fourth finger on that A. No open A's. And the reason why is because you cross over to the A for one note, and then you have to cross over to the G. And that's kind of, that's really awkward and just not, uh, not a good fingering to do. So definitely do a fourth finger for that A. Okay, and then going on, so we are coming up to measure 13. Again, just like measure one. And then measure 14, same rhythm as measure 13. Again, fourth finger for the E, and then measure 15. Now, as you see in 15, we have a C natural, okay? So it's a low two. Now, don't have your twos have an identity crisis, I call them, okay? No identity crises for your, your twos. They either have to be high or they have to be low. Nothing in the middle, <laughs> okay? So... Uh, so measure 15, really feel your two come back next to your one. And then that brings us into video two. Now before we get into video two, I'm going to play this from the beginning up until this point of measure 17. So you can really feel the flow and hear how it goes. All right, so here we go. video two where we explore the double stops. Have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!